Okay, let's start with the period. Uh, the period is found by taking two, actually, yeah, for secant, it is 2 pi divided by b. Um, when you get to tangent and uh, cotangent, that period is pi divided by b, so just watch out for that. Sine, cosine, secant, co uh, well, sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, those all have a 2 pi divided by b formula for period. And b is just this number that's in front of x. So we got 2 pi, and instead of writing with the division symbol like this, I'm going to write it like this. 2 pi divided by pi over 4. So that means we flip and multiply the second fraction. And when you do that, the pi's cross cancel, and 2 times 4 makes 8 for our period. And now they ask us to state the asymptotes on this domain. Since p is our domain, uh, sorry, since, uh, since uh, p is in the uh, restriction on the domain here, from negative 8 to 8 is what they're asking for, uh, we want to find out all the asymptotes that happen. Asymptotes happen on graphs when you get closer and closer to this divide by 0 thing. Okay, So we can rewrite this whole function up here as 3 over cosine pi over 4 x plus 1. Okay, and I wrote it like that. That way we can say, hey, divide by, uh, asymptotes happen when we have a divide by zero problem. So let's just set this bottom equal to zero. So in order to make that happen, think about when cosine is zero. Cosine are the uh, cosine is the x coordinates on the unit circle. So think about when the x coordinates are zero on this unit circle x right here on the unit circle, it starts at 1 comma 0, so that's when cosine equals 1. This coordinate right here is 0 comma 1, that's where cosine equals 0. Okay, And cosine also equals 0 down here too, so we'll also want to consider that option. This is 0 comma negative 1, so that means cosine is 0 down here too. This angle is pi over 2 to hit the first one, and then 3 pi over 2 like we saw before, that's how you'd get uh, three-fourths around the circle. So uh, we know what the angle is supposed to be. Inside the cosine function, this whole thing inside the cosine function is supposed to equal pi over 2. Once we solve that, we'll have at least one asymptote. And then we need to solve for when pi over 4x plus 1 equals 3 pi over 2. Okay, so a little equation to finish solving here. Let me see if I can move some stuff around. Give myself some room. Okay, so to solve those equations, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by pi and this by pi because that's going to cancel out all the pi's. Divide both sides by pi. Equal step. It's a perfectly equal step because we divide everything by the same thing. So we got 1 over 4 x plus 1 equals 1 over 2 when you cancel out those pi's and then you have over here 1 over 4 x plus 1 equals 3 over 2. So to finish solving um, that's that's a, an equation we've probably seen before but uh, just in case we need help there's a couple of different ways. I like to cut out the fractions. If you multiply everything by 4 then 4 times 1 fourth just makes 1 so we're left with the parentheses. Note that I didn't make 4 and multiply it to everything inside that parentheses because it already canceled out with that 1 fourth. And then 4 times 1 half, it's just half of 4. I'll do the same thing over here, multiply everything by 4. That gives me x plus 1 equals 6 because 4 times 3 over 2, that's going to make 6. Don't need the parentheses anymore. We get x equals 1 and x equals 5. Uh, okay, that's two asymptotes. But remember our interval is uh, from negative 8 to positive 8. It um, should be a cause for alarm that we didn't get any other asymptotes, right? Um, because we'd think some of them would be negative to perfectly balance it out. So that's where you could think about negative angles. Like if you had negative pi over 2, that would also land you at, uh, at 0 for cosine. So you've got two more equations you can solve for more asymptotes. Okay. We did it for uh, x equals, oh no, I think I forgot the equation. Um, 
remember it's pi over 4 x plus 1. This is the argument of the cosine function. Now let's solve it for when it equals negative pi over 2. And pi over 4 x plus 1 equals negative 3 pi over 2. You'll take the same steps that I just took. Okay, I'm going to try to do it quickly in my head. We get x plus 1 equals negative 2. And then over here you get x plus 1 equals negative 6. So when we solve these, I get x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 7. So that combined with the other ones, are uh, that's the full amount of um, asymptotes that we have. So just make sure to put that in the notation that um, Mobius wants. I think it wants semicolons in between. So negative 7, semicolon, negative 3, semicolon 1, semicolon... And I forgot what the other one was. It was when we plugged in 3 pi over 2, so you get... This was 1 equals 6. Uh, 5 was the other one. Those are the four asymptotes that are between negative 1 and... Uh, sorry, between negative 8 and positive 8 that they were asking for. And then, same type of thing over here, but I wanted to do this one because this involves tangent. The period of tangent, remember the formula for tangent and cotangent, like we said at the beginning of this video, is a little bit different. It's not 2 pi divided by b. It's pi divided by b. So our b in this case is 1 because there's no coefficient of x. So the period is just pi. Uh, looks like I might have copied something down wrong. But if they want the asymptotes again, I'm not sure what they're asking for in this question because looks like I didn't copy it down right. Um, if they want the same type of deal, all the asymptotes between negative pi and pi, um, then we want to do the same type of thing. Think about when we're going to have a divide by zero error. And that the way you can find that out is by, is by rewriting tangent using its sine and cosine definition. Tangent is sine of the same argument divided by cosine of the same argument. So this is tangent. It's sine over cosine. So we're interested for I interested in asymptotes. So we're interested where this is a divide by zero problem. So it's the same type of thing. You want to find out when the uh, argument of cosine is going to equal that uh, pi over 2 that we saw. And then when it's going to equal 3 pi over 2. Because those are uh, both things. If you were to plug in 3 pi over 2 in here, that makes cosine equal to zero. And then x minus pi over 3, you want to solve for where that's going to equal negative pi over 2. And then x minus pi over 3, you want to solve for when that's going to equal negative 3 pi over 2. So solve those four equations like we did in the last one, and you'll find uh, four asymptotes. I right, just got to thinking, I said four asymptotes. I think there's only going to be two that fit on this interval when you solve this. Um... Because if you add pi over 3 to both sides, I'm trying to do it in my head. When you solve this one, this is 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6. So this is going to be 5 pi over 6. And then if we solve this one, that's actually going to be above. This is going to be too far beyond. We're just asked for the asymptotes between negative pi and positive pi. So this one's too big when you solve that one. I think it's going to be the same thing over here. If you add pi over 3 to both sides, then negative 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. That's going to be 3 over 6, 2 over 6. That makes negative pi over 6. Now that one should work. So this one should be able to solve. That's a number between negative pi and pi. And then if you try to solve this one, x minus pi over 3 equals that's negative 9 pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 6. Yeah, this one's going to be too large as well when you solve that one. So it's really just two asymptotes. I said four at the end of uh, that video I just clipped, but it's actually just two asymptotes for this one.